10% off. That's how much you can save with Cash App. Cash App has this system of cashback which come in the form of instant discounts that give you 10% off or more at retailers you actually shop at. So these are like major places, Walmart, Target, grocery stores, McDonald's, Domino's. The places rotate, it can vary, but this is an insane amount of cashback that no credit card or other type of bank offers. It also comes with some risks because a lot of people get scammed on Cash App and we're gonna get into that. That's why in this super extensive Cash App review, we're gonna go over what is Cash App, how Cash App works, customizing your Cash App debit card, setting up contactless payments, Cash App fees, Cash App scams, and most importantly, if you do get scammed, how to contact Cash App customer service. With that said, this video is not sponsored by Cash App. I'm just a guy named Dan who likes to get full value and this channel is called Full Value Dan. Now, I know we're not sponsored by Cash App so I'd like to bring up our real sponsor, Planters. Planters Peanuts, it's nuts. Okay, it's not sponsored by Planters but I had those peanuts there and I was like, all right, maybe I could use it in the video and that was a weak joke. I'm giving you full value on content and very cheap jokes. With that said, I know it's the worst time to ask you to like this video, but please like this video because you're in for some very good content. Liking the video really helps out the YouTube algorithm, especially if you watch the whole video, and I really think you should watch till the very end because you need to know how these Cash App scams work and how to contact customer service for Cash App because it's incredibly challenging. Now, I did have an issue with setting up my Cash App account for Bitcoin, but they never got back to me. It's been several days. I contacted customer support and nothing. Even though they say they'll get back to you within 48 hours, you could be in for some challenges and you definitely want to prepare yourself in the event that something happens because Cash App, isn't the most reliable bank. I will say that straight up right now because there's a lot of scammers, a lot of ways to lose your money, but high risk, high reward, 10% off. What is Cash App? Cash App is a person to person platform where you can easily send money between friends and family. I suggest never using this with anyone else. Along with Cash App, you can buy and sell Bitcoin and you can invest in stocks. I also don't recommend using Cash App for any of these platforms and we'll cover more of that later in this video. Now, Cash App Boost is something that's included when you have a Cash App account. A Cash App account is something you can only apply for through the app and it takes about five minutes. Right now, we're in the Cash App app. We're in the boost section and I'm going to show you how easy it is to switch between these cash app boosts. First of all, we're going to run through a couple of these. 10% off each order of DoorDash and you can see it expires in four days. The minimum purchase required is $2. I don't think you can even order less than $10 on DoorDash, I'm not aware, and you get a maximum discount of $5. Now, if you kind of do your own calculation here, the most you should spend with DoorDash is $50 to maximize that 10% discount because that's how you get $5 cash back. And the condition stipulated here is you can use it once every hour. So now we're gonna run through things. 10% off one purchase any grocery store. Now it doesn't mean it's 10% off one item, it's your entire purchase, which means you could have multiple items at checkout. So if we dig into this, it expires in four days and they typically renew with very similar retailers. The minimum purchase is $1.50, the maximum discount is $7.50, which means $75 is the most you should spend at a grocery store. It doesn't say if you get it again, there's no stipulation that you can use this multiple times, but it is possible and your experience may vary. So if you think about this, 10% back off at a grocery store, even just once a week, because you're not gonna go to the grocery store multiple times a week, is insane. A majority of credit cards that are generous with their cash back provide only 3%. On the high scale, you get 6%. Once you have your cash app set up to activate a boost, all you have to do is just flick it up there. You could uh, 
yeah, you can switch between these. You can see Walmart 10% off one purchase, but this one has a special requirement. To unlock the Walmart boost, it does require you to make five transactions before you qualify for the cash back. All you have to do to activate it is use your card at least five times. The cash app debit card is a debit card attached to your cash app checking account, and you can fund that through a debit card or Bitcoin, which is surprisingly convenient in this modern age. This is me, a new user, and I'm going to show you all the Cash App boosts available, 10% off DoorDash, 10% off Walmart, 10% off a purchase at any grocery store, 10% off each purchase at McDonald's. It's not healthy, but I will eat there with a discount. Yeah, of course, it's, it's a good deal. 10% off the PlayStation Network, 10% off an Xbox purchase, Popeyes, Domino's, Subway, Taco Bell, Dollar Tree, Starbucks. All of these are 10%. Now, I've read reports online, people do get different rates. Now, I've also seen people getting rates of 15% off, and those are for people who have been using Cash App longer and they make more transactions. Now, there's no guarantee that you'll get those higher discounts, but 10% is really generous. 15% off on a grocery purchase or Taco Bell is insane because 4% back was the highest I've seen before with the US Bank Altitude Go, did a review on that, and I thought that was incredibly generous. But if you are retail specific and you go to these establishments anyway, you cannot get a better cashback deal than this. If there is, please let me know. I'd like to know about it. But for the typical person, you would see 3% back on dining. And that's with a really good credit card. This is incredibly generous and you can use it multiple times. So if you even just save $5 a week, 52 weeks a year, that's $260 in cash back every year. Now with a credit card signup bonus, you would expect to get like between $200 to $500. So the cash app system with no annual fee and it's a debit card, really pays off in the long term if you are frequenting these retailers. With cashback in the form of Cash App Boost, you get the cashback immediately. So let's say you spent $10 at McDonald's, you get 10% back, you only pay $9 for your meal. It's not like other reward systems where you have to hit a certain amount of cashback or wait until your statement. The cash back on the debit card is immediate. Well, that was the most exciting part of the app. I'm gonna go through the rest of it. Now, signing up, you have to use the app and they do have a small but insignificant sign up bonus. If you sign up for Cash App and use my referral link, I get $5, full disclosure, and you get $5 after your first transaction. So you just have to send some money through Cash App. Now, if you're signing up for Cash App, it is a checking account and it's a money management account and investing account. What you need to sign up, you have to be at least 18 years old and they do require the last four digits of your social security. There is no check on your credit report, so there is no hard pull. I don't think there's even a soft pull on your credit report because they don't even ask for your full social security number. And while you're signing up, you can even come up with your own cash tag. I tried a lot of things and a majority of the good cash tags have been taken. Cash App is definitely targeting a younger audience. They keep things very simplified with limited features and for the most part, limited benefits. Even their copywriter on the fees does not know how to really advertise the power of the Cash App card. So now that you've signed up for the Cash App card, you can customize your card if you require a debit card. You don't necessarily have to order one, but you can order one for free. The black card is for free, the white card is for free, the glow-in-the-dark neon card will cost you an additional $5, and the HBA, Hood by Air, limited edition Cash App card will cost you $35. Square, the owner of Cash App, 
uses that fee that you pay for the limited edition card to help charities. That is a great thing. They don't really advertise it. I would even like it if they changed their referral system to like, all right, if you sign up, we give you $5. 250 goes to you, 250 goes to charity. That would still be generous. That would still encourage people to sign up and make them feel pretty good. So helping charity, always a good thing. Did I do it? Okay, next part, <clears throat> designing your card. You can design your card. It's in the bottom right corner of the screen. There is a small section where you can pretty much draw whatever you want as long as it's within reason. I guess it's no copyrighted material, nothing vulgar, and you can customize your card that way. I tried writing my name, that seemed to be okay. I don't know if you can, um, I don't know the limitations of what this is, but I also just ended up just doing a little silly drawing. Now, as for their selection, you can add emojis and some custom characters or just free draw whatever you want. I would have liked it more if I could have imported like a template, a file or anything, but you have to draw it on the app. After you set up your debit card, you can actually use it immediately with Cash App, if you have Google Pay or Apple Pay available on your phone, depending on your phone, of course, you can add it to your contactless payments. So it's available for immediate use. Let's go into the Cash App fees and I want to show you what they have displayed on their website. Now, if you only look at the app, you're gonna see that they have the weirdest promotions for their fees. They don't have any monthly fees or maintenance fees, but these are the fees they have. Per purchase fee, $0. That is insignificant. No one charges you to make a fee on your debit or checking account or credit card. So this is like a BS bonus. I don't know why they put this in. There is an ATM fee of $2 every time you use an ATM and there's additional charges based on the ATM operator. And we're gonna get into more details on that in a moment, but we're gonna continue with fees. Cost to add cash, $0. No bank charges you money to, for you to give them money, of course. Customer service, $0. ATM balance inquiries, $0. Inactivity, $0. Yeah, that's nonsense. Cash App and Venmo, both of them are person-to-person -person payment systems and kind of run like a checking account. They are not FDIC insured, which means if they go out of business, so does your money. I would not put any serious money in Cash App or Venmo. I just recommend using it for cash back if you're gonna go get some fast food or buy some groceries. I don't recommend ever having more than $100 in your Cash App account. A couple more fees that aren't listed. If you wanna redesign your card and get issued a new card, it's gonna cost you $5. If you're gonna send someone money with a credit card, it's gonna cost you 3% of that transaction. If you're gonna buy or sell Bitcoin through Cash App, it's gonna cost you 1.76%. The best part of Cash App is the no foreign exchange fees. Pretty much, you get the bank rate and you just have to pay a small conversion fee. So you can use any ATM in the world and there are no foreign transaction fees. Now, I know I said there are ATM fees and the operator fees on top of that, but you can avoid it. So with Cash App, they do charge you $2 per ATM use. And then typically the amount to use an ATM in the US is $5 if you're not a member of that bank. But with Cash App, if you have a direct deposit of at least $300 per month, they waive up to $7 in ATM fees every month. So that covers the $2 fee for Cash App and the $5 fee from the ATM operator. Now you can do this up to three times per month and that's at least $21 in credits from Cash App. Personally, I think this proves to have a lot of value and can sort of compete with the Charles Schwab card. Now, I know it does require direct deposit. You might not have direct deposit or you don't wanna set it with Cash App. I personally do not because I don't want my money locked in Cash App if anything ever happens to my account. 
but you can fake a direct deposit through a variety of different payment platforms. I'm going to leave a list in the comments that redirects you to a blog post with all the details. Sending money with Cash App to other people is free, but extremely dangerous. If you're sending money with a credit card, it's going to cost you 3%. But there is a lot of risks. So of course, you need to be very careful. I highly recommend only using Cash App to send money to friends and family. If there's anyone who wants to do business or any type of uh, business transaction for goods or services through Cash App, don't do it. Call them a liar, call them a scammer, and secure your money because there is no purchase protection on Cash App. If you send someone Bitcoin, that money is gone. That money is theirs. There is no purchase protection. You can't go to the Bitcoin company and say, hey, send me my money back. By the way, there is no Bitcoin company. Same thing with Cash App. Even though Cash App runs their system, they do not provide any purchase protection to the people on their platform. So if someone scams you out of all the money in your account, they can't reverse that transaction. My bank told me that I was being scammed. I was like, no, no. I in Huntsville almost got scammed after trying to contact a popular payment service called Cash App. Lost hundreds of dollars by accessing the wrong customer service website. But when she went to activate it, she accidentally clicked on the wrong website. They was able to take my picture, get my driver license. But they asked her to send $100 through the app to an out-of-state number. Well, that right there told me it was a fraud because if someone calls you over the phone asking you for your information, hang up. Now, I'm not saying everyone is going to have a bad experience. You just have to be very careful with how you use the app and who you interact with. So with that said, you're going to want to avoid Cash App scams. I'm just going to give you a few Cash App scam examples that you should look out for. There's the fake customer support. Say you have an issue with your Cash App, you look up the Cash App customer support number and you get linked to a scammer. So they're going to ask for team viewer access through your phone where they can steal all your personal information with the app and then send themselves your money. Cash App Earn. So I was looking for Cash App Cashback and all these spammy videos about how to make money with Cash App came up. Just so you know, there is no one that will give you money for free, especially like $800. That is crazy. If you think someone's going to give you $800 for adding an app, that app is going to steal all your money in your account. Now, I know Cash App is really targeted to a younger audience, who is not aware that the world can be an awful place. So just be careful and just be aware. I even looked at their YouTube videos and these are like hacked YouTube accounts. So be very careful and don't really trust everyone on the internet. Cash app money flip. Someone out of the blue contacts you even on Instagram or through Cash app. They just want to find a way to contact strangers and then they mass contact them. Then they say, hey, I can turn your $100 into $1,000. All you have to do is send me the money and then I'll send it back immediately. It's called a cash app flip and you get 10X on your money instantly. Here's a few screenshots and customer reviews that will prove how authentic I am as a person and how I will not cheat you. They will absolutely cheat you. There's no easy way to make money. Don't fall for this. There's another one which I thought was <laughs> Pretty clever. Oh, this is the, the classic Nigerian print scam. Basically, a stranger says, hey, I sent you some money. I sent you $1,000, but it's not going through on Cash App because you have to pay the fees. Just for your evidence, here's the screenshot that shows, hey, I sent you this money, but it's not going through. So you have to send them 5% of the cost, $50 for the taxes to transfer the money. This is a complete lie, but it's a pretty good one. You send them that $50, you never hear from them again. I actually read a pretty good story on Reddit about someone who was involved in this type of scam. Then they told the scammer they needed $2 for gasoline to get to the bank so they could deposit the money. Which doesn't make sense. Like you have money to deposit and transfer, but you don't have money for gas.
That was one of my favorite stories, but all the really bad stories I hear are about people losing their money and Cash App customer service is not able to help them. Which brings me to my next point, customer service. To contact customer service, it's not easy. You can only contact them by email, but then I also found a secret phone number that's on the official Cash App website. Now this number might change, so I'm just gonna leave a link to the official Cash App website so you can find the number for yourself. Don't trust my numbers or screenshots. You could always Google it, but make sure it goes to the official cash.app website and be careful. And they also want to tell you that they will not contact you over the phone, only via text or email within the app. With that said, I love the Cash App Boost system. The cash back is very generous. What I don't love about Cash App is that there's no purchase protection. It's full of scammers. It's very dangerous to interact with people. It's like the wild west out there. So you always have to have your guard up. Personally, I would not set up my direct deposit with Cash App because I'm afraid of being scammed or hacked. And in the event that that happens, your account gets locked until they can investigate and figure out what happened. Now, I've seen stories of people's accounts being locked for weeks or months. And yeah, if you're getting direct deposit to your bank account, your, your money's locked up. So I really don't like that. That is something you wouldn't really experience with the more traditional banks like Chase, US Bank, Wells Fargo, Citi. With these real banks, they actually have a team of people that can support their customers with actual bank branches all around the country for you to get help. Their accounts are also FDIC insured. So I want to offer some alternatives to Cash App in case you're a young person and you don't know what kind of bank you can get. I highly recommend Charles Schwab. I've said that in many videos before and I'll still keep saying it. Charles Schwab has been my favorite bank account. You can use any ATM fee. There's no direct deposits required. There's no minimums you have to keep in your account. And they give you a $100 sign up bonus for signing on with them, which is crazy. You're giving them your money, but they're also giving you money. If you wanna pay your friends or family really easy with money, there's of course Cash App. Venmo, and Zelle. All of those do not have any purchase protection. Once your money is sent, it's gone. As for paying for goods and services, I highly recommend using PayPal or a credit card. Both of those offer a lot of purchase protection, and in the event that your account details are leaked or money is fraudulently used, you are protected. And as far as investing, I would not invest using the Cash App. It's very simple, it doesn't have a lot of details, but as I said, if someone hacks your account, they could just sell all your stocks and then instantly send themselves that money. Buying Bitcoin is a pretty fun feature with Cash App. It's actually better than Robinhood because when you buy Bitcoin on Cash App, you actually get that Bitcoin and you could send it somewhere else. You can also fund your account on Cash App with Bitcoin, although, the buy and sell fees are 1.75%. When compared to Coinbase, they have a tier system with much higher fees. Or if you use Coinbase Pro, those fees are 0.5%. So 1.75% for Bitcoin fees on Cash App is a pretty reasonable amount if you're just getting started. If you're going to buy thousands of dollars of Bitcoin, I highly recommend using Coinbase Pro. And that's it. Okay, that's a pretty good video on Cash App. This has been a super detailed review on Cash App, why you should get it, how amazing that Cash Boost is, and yeah, that's just Cash Back. So they are very generous with Cash Back. That got me interested in the topic, and I had to research it thoroughly to find out all the fees and details about Cash App. If this has been helpful for you, I'd appreciate it. If you liked the video, comment, say, hey Dan, good job. That specifically, that means I know you saw it or any other type of compliment because I like my ego boosted. So let's keep the ego up here and until next time.